I think there's a very distinct path that the Chinese AI world is taking that's different to the to the US AI world. So in, in one sense, what I see happening in the US is a really strong emphasis on building these very powerful, abstract, highly general large language models with a real commitment and a belief that the generalizability is there. It's the generalizability that will provide better quality applications uh, that users will like much, much more. Now, of course, there are vertical things happening in the US, but they don't have the same degree of, uh, of visibility and the same degree, perhaps, of traction as the big general LLMs. What we're seeing in China from the big labs, who I didn't get to meet, I didn't get to meet at DeepSeek or Baidu and, and, and so on, what we're seeing from those labs, of course, are competitive uh, large language models, uh, you know, the, the, the Quen series, uh, and of course, deep seek, the ecosystem is cracking along with more vertical apps, taking advantage of it, the ability to get lots of users and from lots of users, lots of data. I've also had a couple of great conversations in the education and health space. Now, the, the reason these are interesting, and I think they're really interesting for uh, American audiences, is that, you know, we, we are familiar with the the problem of cost disease in services in the US where a whole load of things have got much, much cheaper where you apply technology to them, whether it's cell phones or computers or TVs. And there are a bunch of things, healthcare and education, which are getting more and more expensive. And one of the arguments from Silicon Valley is that it's because technology has not had a chance to disrupt those areas, bring higher quality at lower, at lower cost. Once it is able, able to do that, we will start to see really, really substantial, substantial uh, changes in the way those services get delivered. Well, what's happened in, in China is that there have been examples, some examples of that happening at scale. So I was able to speak to the, the, the chair of the Yidu Tech, which is a healthcare company, uh, Gong Rujing, and their scale is, is quite something. They've analyzed five and a half billion authorized medical records covering nearly a billion patients. And they've facilitated 350 clinical studies. As of last year, nearly 28 million people had completed at least one interaction with their, with their healthcare platform. And it was, it was really interesting to see that scale. Uh, and that scale is enabled, of course, because there's a public health system in China, the public health insurance. I'm going to absolutely brutalize the pronunciation, I think is uh, women bow. And, and through that, uh, Yidu Tech serves more than 34 million people in a dozen cities. So you get this point where actually you do see all of the benefits of a large population which you can serve and then start to get the data and the interactions from all of this. Another founder I spoke to, I mean, I spoke to many, was a really impressive guy called Derek Lee. And Derek uh, is the founder of something called Squirrel AI, which is an education platform. Now, we've, we've got these ideas, right, that AI can adaptively deliver kids' education, keep them in that flow state where questions are hard but not too hard. Progress can be very quickly tested and the, the, the difficulty of the lessons can be adapted appropriately to maximize learning rates. Derek was a winner of the International Maths Olympiad. He was an absolutely superb, high-energy person. And, you know, as he started to talk to me talk to me about this app. So the way they think through delivering, you know, curricula through an AI teacher where there's no human teacher involved is to think through how do you deliver a degree of metacognitive capability that might vary from subject to subject. Our act of metacognition, if you're doing maths, is quite different if you're doing perhaps a social science. What that required then was a very, very granular breakout of a series of skills and sub-skills that then become pathways that are adaptive pathways that uh, students get through. They've served 24 million students. They also give this service away for free to millions of students in the poorest areas of China. One of the, the observations Derek's ma Derek made was that there are lots of places where you'll be taught maths in rural China, far in the, in the east, maybe in, you know, in the Tibetan plateau or something, where you won't be taught by anyone who's been trained in, in math tuition, and now you can be with Squirrel AI. Some of the numbers that he shared with me of uh, performance improvement were absolutely crazy and, and off the charts. Students who went through the, the Squirrel AI system 
had far better learning outcomes than those who were taught by the very, very best teachers in their field. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. If you want to know when the next conversation is released, just hit subscribe wherever you're listening. That's all for now, and I'll catch you next time.